Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sage and um, I, uh, I came here to just try something new and I love hackathons. I'm a dental student but I've been coding for 16 years and so I do this as a hobby after Rook and Delta done. Uh, I, uh, I was actually just looking at NASA's APIs and, and the data that was available and I ran into this thing and I know I love NASA's mission and I, and I completely understand pushing the final frontier but I know NASA's always been so working towards uh, improving Earth sciences, improving Earth uh, data as well. So I, I took this upon myself and I was like, listen, this is all the severe weather data. Let's make it a little more useful. Uh, so I, I opened up my Python, uh, wrote a parser in there, and then I basically just put it online. So now you have access to all of weather data since 1995 to 2016 as an open API if you want to see any kind of storms events. Uh, so yeah, if you want to play with that, there's data like in there being like the description, the state it happened, the longitude, longitude, some tour stuff, I don't even know what that means, but it's there for you. Um, and then I was like, well I have this data now, so let's use it for something interesting. So then I built a web app, um, and I started mapping them on, uh, on, 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 a, on a United States map. And I was like, why not play with the timeline? So I started going back and forth, and I was like, ooh, it would be kind of cool to like have like clusters of weather events happening, and I was like, maybe there's a correlation between where they happen and how many people are hurt during these events, and the fact that they happen in these locations. And then it got me thinking, I'm like, listen, you know, severe storms happen everywhere. And sometimes you have more casualties than others, sometimes you have more help than others. Is it the infrastructure, is it the correlation with something else? So then I went to... Yeah, I'm just curious like that, but <laughs> I went to this uh, HDI map website, which gives you a lot of data on just measure of America and the states and in terms of like income tax then per state, in terms of uh, GDP per state, also how many physicians are hired in the state. There's also data about populations in general, like obesity, diabetes, all that fun stuff. Um, and the great part about that was like, wow, this is really cool data. Why not just scrape this in too? And so then I opened that up. Um, so now you have access to population data if you want to look across the United States and see what's happening across the states. And I was like, why don't we correlate the two together? So then I built analysis on terms of how much we pay for police in certain areas and physicians and how likely are the severe storms to cause damage to us. In terms of there's a direct correlation between how much we spend on these services and how likely it is that things are going to get damaged or people are going to get hurt in these areas. So there's been a strong correlation pretty much every single year. It turns out the more we spend, the less likely we're to get hurt, and the less we spend, the more likely things are about to go wrong. So that's data driving uh, intent. So then I was like, well, maybe we can take it one step further and we can look at latitude, you know, severity of storms. Maybe it depends on latitude, but maybe also infrastructure, because it turns out northern latitudes have more developed countries and better infrastructure. And then it got me thinking, like, what if we were to take this aspect of it and apply it to colonization? If we were to think about colonizing a new place, how would we do it? How would we make trade-offs for limited resources? And then I was like, well, trade-off analytics is pretty cool. I almost got to that, but I didn't. Uh, but instead, I took the time to uh, go to Microsoft and uh, build a machine learning uh, experiment. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to put all this data in that I had and get a, a result back and being like, if I have all these three factors, and I really looked at three careful factors. One was the physicians, one was the police. And then I wanted to look at women in Congress. I thought maybe that would make a difference. Turns out it does. Uh, <laughs> you survive more when women are in power. So if that helps you vote, well, I mean, that's, that's beyond the scope of that, that's beyond the scope of this. Um, but you should definitely elect more women, because I really do believe they're the future. Um, but in any case, I, uh, I went back and like planted that, and I, and I adapted that. And it turns out as you like, lower women, your, pro your survivability optimization really goes down significantly. Because like, look, you lower this, it's not so much. <laughs> but like you lower this even like a little bit, it's like crazy. It's like what's happening there. Um, so all of that data is open to you. If you want to access it right now, you can. Some of it, some of the endpoints might actually cause you to delete it, but that's okay. I can put it right back up. I just haven't closed it all off, but it's going to be open forever. Uh, you can access it. And uh, if you want to see how many records there are uh, in terms of storms, there's about 40,444 event records from 1995 to 2016 that tell you about a tornado, about latitude, longitude, and you know, I just feel like you mentioned that NASA's working on missions to 
improve earth sciences and a lot of that involves getting data to do this and I think that's the first step. Um, making APIs that are simple to use because ultimately we all benefit when we have open source data and at the end of the day big data is not useful on its own. It's you people, it's us who hack at it to make it really useful and I think actionable data is useful data. So, well thank you so much for your time. This is really interesting, like all the correlations that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, there, there is a, I mean, I would hesitate before jumping from correlation to causality. Exactly, I know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we're like, um, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, we get it. There's also uh, impact versus actually like, clinical efficiency. Like, for example, you can have something that's not statistically significant, but can be clinically impressive, so you might use it in practice, so. Right, is, is there any kind of built-in statistical uh, um, or anything that I would mean? love to say yes, but I literally didn't have the time. No, because I, I, sleep, I, didn't, I mean, it's hard to do a one-man team, but, yeah. um, but I will build that, so it's yeah. not a problem. No, this is great. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Oh, and, you can, and, and this is live, so you can like, just scroll right back to 1995 and like watch it just load all the data in, and like it'll start like loading in there, and these are all the clusters, and you can zoom right in, and you can see where the events happen, and enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. No problem.